Wow, this is like the most chill I've been in a few videos, but I think the chill videos kind of make it a vibe. Hey, my beautiful YouTube family, Abby here, and I want to tell you that you're my friend, our child of God. Hey guys, what's up? It's Abby. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I am doing a video that was not highly requested, but it was highly requested from me. You may ask yourself, why is there not a Remnant 2021 vlog? Well, shout out Remnant Youth. <laughs> Shout out Ramnet Youth. Every single year from 2015 up until this year, I think minus 2016, I have posted a vlog. It's practically tradition. But this year, to not post a vlog. That's how you know that there's a story behind why. So in this video, I wanted to share with you guys why I didn't vlog and, and basically in this video to talk to you guys a little bit about behind the scenes of what I do in production. So I asked you guys some questions and you guys asked and I'm going to answer them while kind of like telling you guys the story of you know why I didn't vlog. So if you guys want a chill sit down video and story time sit down chit chat video make sure to get comfortable get your cup of tea get your popcorn ready and just sit chill hopefully I'm sitting with you at your lunch break and let's get on to this video so without further ado let's roll the intro clip baby to black. <laughs> and shorts and stuff and I'm gonna answer the questions first and I'm gonna tell you the story as to why or the first question is from Laura she says do you serve in more than one area if so which ones so I basically just serve in media media ride or die <laughs> you know I serve all media all day every day I've been working in media for about two years now however I used to serve in the dance ministry before I started working at church. I served in the dance ministry for about six years. Some of the best years and I recommend doing dance in your high school, beginning of college before work. So Laura also asked, did you get to speak with any of the guest speakers? So that's actually funny that you said that because I kind of missed my opportunity. So basically, if you don't know, I am the webcast producer. So that is one of the campaigns that I produce for and basically, the whole rundown is like, I'll show like a screen recording here. So we had some exclusive interviews with the guest speakers like Todd White, Chris Estrada. Todd White was recording his interview and right after I need to learn, I should have just ran to the room. So he ended up praying for everybody there and that was one of the days. And the crazy thing was is that I didn't like take my shot, but I now know to like go in and just be like, oh hi, like, and he prayed for everybody and it was beautiful. But so sadly, no, I did not get to meet one of the speakers kind of face to face. I kind of, Todd White actually, Todd White actually walked past by me and he gave someone a hug. And I just remember looking at him and, and I just waved like, hi, like, I don't know. I guess, you know, when people get starstruck, like, I was like, hi. And then he, he waved back and I was like, that's all I need, like that impartation to just receive. So that's basically my way of seeing the speakers. And then Pastor Chris Estrada, I saw him for the interview, but I didn't really see him in person. That was more on Dan, and Dan is the producer producer, so he produces the whole Remnant Conference. I produce mostly webcasts. Even serving, do you still receive? Okay. So when you're serving, you're volunteering, right? So you get to receive, you get to take your time, receive and stuff like that. Basically what I do as webcast producer is that every intro and every outro is where I go live. Even if I'm receiving at one of the sessions, my mind is still thinking, I have to be in the room by this time to be able to go live. I did receive. So on Friday I received that Apostle session, I received a dad session and it was great. And then the second day I received at Todd White session. So those are the two sessions that I received at, but since I work in media and every time, like normally during conference I don't really receive. So what I like to do on my day off is that I like to kind of just sit down, watch King Jesus TV, my mom has a membership. I usually watch the whole conference again, sit there and, and see 
not just my work, but I like to sit there and see like what God did. Maybe like a week or two later, I was cutting up the webcast cuts. Basically, I, instead of listening to music, I was listening to the preachings and oh my goodness, I was there and I was like, oh my gosh, like Chris Estrada, Brian Barcelona, when they're telling their stories and, and things and preaching and ministering and Todd White when he preached again, like I was really actually listening to it. And it was just really beautiful to see how all of the pastors kind of aligned together to talk about revival of the vision, you know, evangelism. And there, there was just so many things and just me being an outside perspective two weeks later after like the whole chaos of everything, it, it felt really nice to just sit back and receive. So, so did I receive during the event? Yes and no, but I did receive after. So hopefully that answers your question. Chris Burgo says, you gotta include me next year. Production seems super cool. Honestly, production is super cool. And I look back at it and I'm like, okay, you know, production is very like highs and lows and stuff like that. I think it's really cool working behind the scenes, you know, cause everybody's posting stories and stuff like that and set design and things like that. It honestly, it's super cool. It's just very high stress. So if you're down for high stress, welcome to the mystery. <laughs> Ruth asked me favorite session. So if I can be real and talk to you my favorite session when I was listening in, for Remnant Conference, it is Chris Estrada because Chris Estrada's session was just so good. He was just so real and he was telling stories, being super relatable and then all of a sudden like ministering to our hearts and I don't know, he was just dropping mad revelation that I was like, oh, oh you love people, God loves you, like he, like he loves you that much and like you love me and the, like how, like how do you have the heart like for this? And also honestly, Brian Barcelona, his session was so good. Melissa asked me, so shout out to Melissa, hey. We have a picture here, we actually spent some time together. What did you take out of this experience? So I really like that question because I'm gonna say like work-wise and spiritual-wise. So work-wise and natural-wise, what I took out was number one, delegate, right? So what I've learned is like, even though if I over plan and overthink everything and do things a certain way, know that you have to go to the flow sometimes and you just have to like hit the needle and stuff like that to, to get better. You know, number two, know that you cannot carry the burden alone. And that's something that I did. I carried, I carried the burden alone and it was tough. I now know to delegate and I now know to ask for help and rely on other people's strength and not just hold everything on my back. So the spiritual part that I took out of this was that the source of everything in your relationship with God is your relationship. Going back to your prayer time, going back to your intimacy with God, going back to those moments because honestly, we all fall off the wagon, we all sin, we all do things that we're not proud of. But I think the thing that God was really showing me was to come back to Him and just lay and rest in Him. And that's something that I truly received from the conference, just to really, you know, despite go, go, go and the production and this and this and this, like when you really sit back and you really look at the things you created and what God has done, seeing the youth being transformed, seeing lives being changed every day, like a hundred thousand connections, like that's wild. Seeing that just really shows that what you're doing is really evangelizing to the souls through a camera. So that is what I, that's what I took out of this experience. Ella asks, how do you balance working with receiving, especially during a conference? You receive like, I promise you like my work is amazing and they give us time to receive during a conference but the thing is that my brain couldn't receive until it was finished because the way that I work I'm like oh my god no but I have to do this oh no but this is the next session part is sitting there receiving but like my brain was just somewhere else so for me it was really hard to just sit there and receive because i knew the next thing that i ha i knew i had like a list of things that i had to do and then i guess the stress kind of took over me but then i did get to receive after it's basically how i balance working with receiving i need to do better with that and learn to just let go but that's why friday night services are like the times that i do get to receive and just sit down and be like here i am lord jonathan says <laughs> jonathan Jonathan says, why are you the goat? Boy, <laughs> you are the goat. You are the bomb. What is it, goat? Goat is greatest of all time, right? Greatest of all time. Why are you the goat? Every time you say goat, I think like, bad. That was basically all the questions that we were asked for Remnant Conference. So I'm gonna get into the story. The first day, Thursday, I did get like two clips right here. <laughs> I'm working, but I'll see you guys after. Thank you, Asia, for my makeup. You're welcome. 
y'all want your makeup done, hit me up. Here. So those were the few clips I got from Girl Talk. So for Girl Talk, I am the Girl Talk producer and they had me in charge of audio. I had a whole team of girls that were there for me. Basically as a producer, you produce, like you oversee everything. There were moments that I just needed to like be with my team and be like, hey guys, like get these shots, okay? Thinking about the recap, but then thinking about social media and then thinking about the testimony girls that needed my help and then getting all the girls hype and stuff like that and then making sure pasta de tamari is okay it's kind of just all a lot so i didn't have time to just even get my phone out and stuff because we're sending itineraries we're doing this we're doing that pesada and her guests they were answering some really great questions and it was beautiful something happened with one of my volunteers and she ended up fainting here like a like a thump we thought the big green like platform spell we're like oh my god they're the green platform fell they're they're like no it's a person i just see like one of my friends running up to me and then she was like hey abby one of your volunteers just fainted and she hands me the camera and i'm like oh my gosh like i'm freaking out i'm like oh my god is she okay like i hope she's okay like i love her so much and people were crowding there were like but then I had to call my boss and it was just like a lot that was going on turns out she ended up being okay it's okay now so thank god i didn't even want to vlog anymore at that point i was just like like the devil you're a liar we're gonna pray against this and it's gonna be great friday i wake up and i'm like lord it's a new day <laughs> new beginnings asia's doing my makeup i'm looking like a queen we go inside there's an intro i got this clip this is the only clip that i got for remnant conference so yeah when i tell you i came into remnant conference with makeup on by 4 p.m and leaving after at night leaving the remnant conference i have no makeup on bare face like everything like my lashes off and everything like gone everything that you can possibly imagine to go wrong in a production went wrong a lot of like i should have delegated things and a lot of mistakes and things like that that it it just got to a point where i was like man i had time to prep and i had time to like do things in excellence and do things and whatever but then when the day of the day came like everything looks so perfect on paper like everything like kitchen i'll show you like the google sheet like everything looks so pretty but then the day of nothing like like the execution just and what I do know is that it was because that I was trying to do everything and I remember not delegating and even though you are delegating, you're still doing everything and you can't do everything. You know, I was being an assistant, I was doing production stuff, I was here, I was there, being pulled in like 10 million directions and I just needed to sit there and, and produce, right? Because that's what a producer does. They sit and they produce and the way that I express myself is crying, right? Like, I just need to like have a good cry you know i remember saying this in the video it's like you just need to have a good cry to be able to let out your emotions let out what you're feeling and then you let it go right then the next day saturday lovely saturday we i woke up i was like i'm not gonna get my makeup done i'm just gonna go simple like whatever it's gonna be a good day and then it was so cute because all my webcast volunteers they came up to me they're like abby like oh my god we're so sorry we're gonna like make it happen this isn't this and then like asia gave me coffee lucy gave me coffee i was like wow like this is what it's like to be a producer i think they all just felt bad that i was crying <laughs> so much the day before so everybody was like on their a game and then we ended up having two co-producers in the rooms and they made my life so much easier when i tell you it was like zero to a hundred like friday everything could, that possibly could go wrong went wrong but then saturday Everything was just so like spot on like the games were there the volunteers were on point like the co-producers were on point like Production was on point like everything was like bah, 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 bah. So then every session I was like really enjoying it. I was like, oh wow, like this is crazy I mean, I still didn't vlog because I was just you know being a producer and like I should I get my camera somewhere But honestly, that was the last thing that I was thinking about but I think I got some footage. I don't know but yeah, so, oh, and then there's this last clip that actually, like, I wanted to play for you guys, and it was kind of like, it was kind of like an awe moment when Pastor Osue and Pastor De, Pastor De like, called all of the leads up. Abigail. Abigail. If y'all in the back, if y'all could just run out here this weekend. Este fin de semana. It wouldn't have been possible. No hubiera sido posible. If it wasn't for these leaders. Si no fuera por estos líderes.
webcast. It just it just made my heart melt. So yeah, that was beautiful that you know like what, what you do in private goes out to public. And another bright side, this was my first conference with my boyfriend. So it's funny because last year nobody knew that we were together, so we had like a photo together, and then this year, this year the funny thing that actually happened, we ended up matching. Like, super unintentional. People thought we planned to match, but we really didn't. Funny thing was, is I was wearing white shoes, a blue jumpsuit. Two years ago, I got like a nickname for my pants that were like hefty, because they look like trash bags, right? This. And then this year, I became a nurse, because I was wearing white shoes, this blazer, whatever. This blue jumpsuit, looking like a nurse. I had my lunchbox. It was, it was bad, right? I put on the shoes and I knew. I was like, oh, I feel like a nurse. But I was like, no, I would be comfortable. And then from then on, I was just a nurse. It is what it is, right? That was basically my Remnant Conference experience. And I just wanted to talk to you guys about it because, you know, you guys are family. And I feel like since I vlog every single year, I feel like I owe you an explanation as to why I didn't vlog. Hope you guys forgive me. And, you know, hopefully next year I'll be able to vlog or have someone vlog with me. Overall, the experience was a great experience. And I feel like... I feel like we do things to learn, to grow, and to mold us. I never thought that 16 year old me would be sitting here and being like, hey, like I produced a whole online experience for a conference and I got to produce like Girl Talk, which is like a girls, wo like a w girls movement, you know, in the ministry. And it's just really cool to be able to be a part of such big things that are impacting so many people. And yeah, so I honestly feel very, very, very privileged, you know, no matter how the stress, no matter how like crazy it can get, just knowing that God is in control and knowing that, you know, I am there for a purpose. So guys, that's all that I have for you guys today. If you guys like this video, give it a big thumbs up, like and subscribe to my channel, follow me on all social media, will be linked down below, follow me on Purity Movement. We got some things coming up in your I'm so excited. And follow me on Life Films. I'm getting a little more active on there. I've been getting more shoots, so I'm super excited. I have like some fun videos coming up for you guys. So I hope you guys have been enjoying this content and we're here for you. And yeah, if you guys have not already, make sure to set a plug. Make sure to buy your Remnant merch. I'm obsessed with the merch this year. It's super cool and I love this green. They have gray. They have other things from the youth conference so you can check it out at the website down below right here right here so yeah comment down your favorite session of remnant conference and comment down one thing that you guys receive from the conference so thank you guys so much for watching and yeah so i love you guys so much and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys god bless and that's a wrap for remnant 2021 so i got my bracelets here ah. oh, i can see us Running, running, running! Yeah, yeah. Our Rona test, Mick Conference.